Hello and welcome back to Factorio Tightening the Belt Mega Base Guide. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again. Today we're going to work on a bit of the logistics network. We're going to get the copper and iron set up so it can be delivered automatically by robots up to the batteries. And then uh, we may do a few other things as well in regards to that. And also it's looking like we may need to upgrade our circuits to Red Belt and potentially the smelters as well. I'm not sure if we'll get to that this episode. But uh, first things first is the logistics stuff. So uh, I do want to mention that last episode you guys had some awesome comments uh, in, in regard in the comments in regards to like different ways to use the chests and such. So if you're uh, kind of wondering like different ways the chests can be used besides what I mentioned last episode, definitely read those comments because there's some really really great ideas there. So we're gonna start off and we're just gonna we're gonna make a couple of these and they're very simple. They're just circuits and steel and we will maybe automate these. Uh, normally I would automate them definitely, however, since this is going to be almost an entirely belt base, uh, I'm not sure it's really necessary, same with the roboports, like we're really only going to do just one or two things with the robots. Uh, we're going to use construction robots, but that's not really going to require uh, too many things. So, first off, I think what I want to do, we only have one copper line, so what we're going to do for now is we're just going to pull this off, and luckily there is a splitter here. Now this is not great. I would not recommend this for a like actual robot base. Uh, in fact, I would highly suggest against it. <laughs> uh, do, doing something where you have like a normal smelter and like it's coming into the main bus and you're just like pulling off the main bus to put into, into chests. Uh, if you're doing like full on bot production, uh, it's far better to just do a bot based smelter. And I will show some bot based builds in this series just for people who want to know them. Uh, I'm not really going to use them, but I will show them anyway. But just a quick note here that what I'm doing, uh, the, the reason I'm doing this is one, because it's easy, and two, because for the limited amount of stuff we need, I already had some of these apparently, uh, it's, it's, it's fine, right? It, this isn't like bad just in general, it's just that if you're going larger scale robot production stuff, this isn't really going to work that great. So these guys are here filling up. Now, they're blinking with this icon, right? And this means that they are not in a logistics network. Um, well, and then this one down here means no material for construction, but this means they're not in a logistics network. Now, there's a few things we can do. We can just hard limit the chest. However, with the logistics network, you can actually do it via the inserters. So first, what we need to do is place a roboport, and it fits nicely right here without blocking anything too much. So we're going to place one there, and you can see that icon now goes away. And what we're going to do now is if you click on an inserter, you have this little button up here, this logistics network button, and you also have a circuit network one. Uh, if, for example, though, if we do take this away, this button is still here, but you, uh, it'll, it'll connect, but it says no network and range. So you can set a condition on that, but it just won't do anything. In fact, it will stop the inserter because he, he's just blank. He has no condition. Uh, but if we do put a row pour down, you can see now that there is connected to network. Uh, enable, disable which is the mode of operation, only one available. And then it's a very simple condition. So you click in here and you just do, in this case, copper less than 200 is what I'm gonna do. And this is just saying you can work if copper is less than 200. And copper is more than 200, there's 561 in this network, so it stopped working, right? Because it's not less than 200. Once it dips below 200, these guys will work until it hits it and then stop. And that's what we're going to do the exact same thing for iron. And I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to move this or even just get rid of it. We do kind of still need the gears, but for now, I'm just going to do this. And really, we could, I was going to move, move that power pole, but we can just pull from here. And again, we'll just take some of these guys. It's luckily in the same network, so we don't need another RoboPort. And we're just going to go in and connect it again. And then this time do iron, same amount. Uh, actually, we'll do a little more, and the reason I'm doing more is because, if you remember, uh, sulfuric acid actually takes iron to make, so we are going to need a little bit more of that than we would for copper for the batteries and such. And so these guys are going to go until it hits 400, or, yeah, 400. Now, we could put a roboport here if we want for robots to charge, but this is a short enough distance to where this roboport is uh, sufficient for covering all of that. Now, hopefully, these are actually going to, oh dear. I was afraid of that. Uh, this is not actually gonna span up into this past the smelter, so we're gonna have to kind of go around, which is a bit unfortunate. It's a bit of a, a roundabout way. And to do that, 
we need a couple more robot parts, but I did not want to make those red circuits. So we're going to go over here and grab some. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to go around, unfortunately. Probably going to need a couple of these, at least. That should be sufficient. That's four total. That, that should be good, I would think. So let's go ahead and make some more of these. We do have to make those few gears, but that's fine. So we have a port here, which I'm going, that was for demonstration, but there will actually be a port somewhere over there. Uh, let's go ahead, he would fit here, but I'm just gonna stick it here. Uh, now conveniently, these are a four by four uh, size, so you can yellow underground under them and it fits perfectly. And this one, we are gonna have cover this mall area, but I'm gonna move it a bit just so it's a little more convenient for our purposes. I'm gonna actually stick it right in the middle. And the reason for that is because nothing else that I can think of is really gonna go right here. Uh, although I would like it to line up. Okay, maybe we'll do it here. And that kind of covers everything. Let's uh, let's just bring some power over. And then this guy can come up. These guys will go up. Hopefully this is enough. Uh, I'm actually going, it doesn't have to connect to that one. Now you can see this connects to both here. Uh, even if it loses connection to both, if it only connects to one, that's still fine. It's still in the same network. Uh, this is not ever going to be a straight line there, but that's fine. So let's, uh, let's stick him there. And then this can come up and this should cover about everything. So we'll just kind of stick this, let's chop down this tree, right about here. And that should cover everything in here that we need. So power him on. And there we go. So now what we can do is we take these requesters and as I explained last episode, we can just place them down in the right place, hopefully, and uh, and then just request, as I demonstrated last episode. So these need to request both iron and copper. Now, how much do you request? And this is where it kind of comes from experience and personal preference and how your base is laid out, all of those factors come into play. Uh, initially, by default in the game, when you request an item, it's gonna request an entire stack of the item, whatever it stacks to. If it's iron and copper, it'll be 100. If it's, uh, you know, circuits, it'll be 200. Um, however, I don't like that. I don't like it doing that because usually that's way more than I want actually brought there. And what happens is when you put a request in and it needs fulfilling, the second that request goes out and, and, and sends a signal that it does need some fulfilling, the robots will will do all of it. Like, so, you know, if this chest is empty and we request 200 and we do, let's just say we do iron and it was the default vanilla settings um, and it would request 100 iron, It's uh, the bots are gonna bring 100 iron, even if we don't need nearly 100 iron right now. Okay, so I don't really like that happening. So if you actually go into your options, and I believe it's on under other, uh, apparently not, they, sorry, they've moved this around a bit, some of these things, uh, interface perhaps. Uh, show, here we go. Uh, in interaction under interface, set logistics request count to one instead of stack size. So I've done this, I always play with this because like I said, I don't like it requesting the full stack size because now I can just change it to whatever I want without you know the full stack being brought here already. So we're just gonna change this to, uh, we're gonna say 25 for now, maybe too low. And why I'm doing this is because, I mean, this only takes one and it takes five seconds, right? So 25, I mean, that's that's gonna be pretty good. Now, of course, the bots are gonna be fairly slow at this point, we don't have any upgrades. But the other factor to take into account when you do requests is uh, two things. One, the distance from the, uh, deliver from the pickup point to the delivery point, and two, how high of a throughput material it is. So like I said, this takes one iron every five seconds, right? So once they get 25 iron here, you know, this is gonna last for a really long time. And it's not like it's always, you know, they'll, they'll constantly be fulfilling it because it will constantly be dropping below 25, but they should be able to keep up with the demand. However, for something like green circuits, uh, it, for, you know, if I requested iron for this, or even if I, or if I requested copper for copper cable, then you're gonna want a much higher request because it's way higher throughput, so you want, you know, you want more throughput, you want more bots in the air bringing that. Now, the other factor, like I said, is distance. This is, I would qualify as a medium to short distance. Uh, unfortunately, they can't go like, well, yeah, I don't think they can really go like this because this doesn't connect. However, I do have one port left. Yeah, this isn't gonna connect, which is unfortunate because I think they're gonna take some weird routes. We'll have to see, but uh, 
Should have left room in between smelters for another one. But this distance is, I'd say, short to medium, maybe. So 25 is going to be okay. If it's the farther away it is, you want to increase the request because there's going to be that lag time, that travel time. So you want to increase the request to make up for that so it doesn't run out while they're traveling there, if that makes sense. So we're going to do that. And we're just going to request the same for copper because it's, you know, one to one in here. They take the same amount. We're just going to copy paste. You can copy paste your quests like this, like we have with the machines. And that'll do that. Now we don't have any robots in the network, but then we also need to make another one of these. Luckily I can. And we're just going to do some iron. Now this is one iron every second. So that's a little bit faster. I'm going to do, I'm going to do 25 again, just because I think, I think they can keep up. We may go 40, we may go 50. I want to do this also as just test just to see if they can keep up. So now what we need to do is actually go make the robots, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have the frames being made. So let's head on down to where that's being done. And we just need some red circuits for logistics bots. So it's just the robo frames and the red circuits. Now, how many logistics bots do you need? Again, personal preference, uh, however much, you know, and however much material throughput you need. But uh, for this case, I'm, I think maybe 100, maybe less even is probably going to work. And I'm going to manually insert them because, like I said, we're not really doing much with robots in this playthrough. So I'm not going to need a ton of them. Uh, if, if you are planning to use quite a few of them, there are some ways you can automatically insert them. And I'll go over that here in a second. So we have construction bots being made. Uh, I was going to do logistics bots too. Of course, we don't have red circuits over here. We have them down here. But like I said, hand making them, they make really fast. They take half a second if you have the frames and stuff on you. And this is actually probably way too many frames. So we're just going to use, these actually take two advanced circuits. We're just going to make what we can here, use all of our advanced circuits, and that should be good for now. Now these are going to seem painfully slow. I, uh, I like to call these like hair dryer or wind powered uh, robots because these guys are horribly slow until you get upgrades. Luckily, robot speed isn't infinite research. It gets insanely expensive, but it can also get pretty crazy with how fast they move. So we're just going to stick these in here. And you just, I'm just control left clicking, you can see how slow they are. Uh, and I'm just putting them in here. And they're gonna go start fulfilling this request. Um, based on <laughs> how slow they are, I probably wanna up the request and add more robots. Uh, we will wanna knock out an upgrade or two. In fact, can we do that? Uh, here's a cargo size. I Okay, so this is red, green, and blue. I should've gotten that sooner. Yeah, we didn't even have that. So these guys are gonna go, they're gonna grab this. Right now they can each carry, I believe, uh, two because we had the base cargo size and then I got another one so they can each carry two materials Each which isn't too bad Now in terms of inserting robots Automatically <clears throat> you you can have an inserter insert row uh, robots into a robo port. So let's just quickly go over that So if we just take some robots, of course, it's not gonna work. Okay, let's use construction ones We will probably want construction ones in here anyway um, so if we do this, and they can just pull from a machine or a chest or whatever, and uh, we're gonna stick these guys in here. All right. Now you could just turn this on, and they're gonna go in here and just start. Right. However, if you want to, because this is gonna be like if this is coming from a machine, you're just gonna end up inserting like infinite robots and this can actually be a problem because you do want to limit it even if you want a lot of robots the problem you can run into is that if, if you don't put some sort of limiter on it that it so it'll start filling this up right and let's say it fills up this row port and you have like construction orders so some of them fly off and then it keeps inserting more and we're being attacked again I just put turrets up here but not right there that's fine we'll ignore it for now <laughs> Uh, and, and they start flying off, so then it fills up the slots those robots occupied, and then uh, when the other ones come back, there's nowhere for them to them for them to go. And they can go into another robo port, but then, you know, if more fly off to go do an order, you fill up even more, and it's possible, I'm not saying it would happen, but it's possible for you to actually overflow your system with robots and to the point where there's robots just sitting everywhere because they don't actually have a home, a robo port to go to. Uh, because all the slots are full. So to limit this, you can actually do a really cool thing with the circuit network. 
and this is uh, just about as straightforward as you can get. Now you can do some really complicated parts with like super crazy limitations and stuff with combinators, which I'm not really sure how to do exactly. Um, but this is a simple way that works pretty darn well in my experience. So if you go into here and you hit, do this circuit network, um, it's not connected because we haven't done anything. So we go here and you can use again, either red or green wire, they're, they're no different. And we connect it. You can see it hooks onto the row port here. If we get rid of that, you can see the little hook on there. And then now it's connected. So you can have it read two things, read logistics network contents, which would be anything in these chests, or read robot statistics. And I'm gonna have it do the robot statistics, because what this does, reads a count of robots in logistics network of this robo port and sends it to the circuit network. So anything in this logistics network, which would be this one we've just built, it's gonna read the robot stats. And it just shows you right here um, the values it's outputting. Uh, and you can change these too if you'd like. I just leave them default because I mean, I don't see anything wrong with these. Uh, available logistics bots is gonna be X. Total logistics bots is Y. Available construction bots is Z. And total construction bots is T. So the difference, if we mouse over our port here, you see logistics down there at the bottom says so zero out of 60. And construction is zero out of zero. There's no construction bots in here right now. Um, but logistics is zero out of 60, which means there's 60 total, which would be this Y value. And then there's zero available which would be an X value, right? And then same for construction, okay? So if we stick these guys in here, and this inserter again, until I give it a condition, it's not gonna do anything. So we could base this off of, you know, whatever, we could do it off the total if we just wanna have a total cap uh, in, in, in regards to how many bots are in here, or if we want it to add more when it drops below an active amount, which with that, the one problem with that is you can still kind of end up with uh, the issue where it fills up more than it should. It's not necessarily gonna overflow, because once you get enough, it's not gonna drop below that amount you set, but it still could give you maybe more than, than is needed. So with that, there are some ways to like, set up a, a smart system to export to, like when it gets to a certain point. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna do the insertion. So for these guys, I just wanna say, you know, and I'm not, I'm gonna set up an actual system, this is an example, but I'm just gonna say if, and this was what? Total construction bots, T. So we're gonna go in here and we're just gonna set this to T, right? If T is less than 100. And you can see he's now inserting, right? Because the total construction robots is less than 100. Okay, and he'll, he'll do that. He'll insert if, if there's robots in here uh, until, until it reaches 100. So that's that's pretty simple. I mean, if you wanted some sort of uh, smart system to export um, off the top of my head, uh, the one thing I could think of is kind of just doing the opposite. Is if So we have like, uh, so you could do like available construction bots. So what you could do, right, is you could say insert if available construction bots is less than 50. Uh, but then if you wanted it to say take out if the available construction bots are more than 100, then you would just do the opposite. So available would be Z. So we just go in here and you would say Z. And if you say Z is more than, instead of less than 100, then it would pull out. And this would just kind of cycle. Like, I don't see a ton of point in these type of systems uh, because, you know, it would just cycle it. It would just be like, you know, it, if there's less than 50, put some in, but then once it goes above 100, if it goes above 100, put, you know, take some out. So that is kind of how you would do that though. And, uh, and there we go. So hopefully that was understandable on how to do some kind of smarter auto insertion things. I may set up a tiny one below or I may just put them in by hand because like I said, they're, uh, we're not gonna use too many of them. And we are out of batteries. I want to check and make sure if that's either an iron copper issue. And we actually have most of these logistics spots free now you can see 52 out of 60 which would lead me to believe this is a different issue which means no sulfuric acid which means no sulfur which means no petroleum because something backed up have your old backed up again i never powered this on <laughs> that'd be why oh uh, you <laughs> sometimes sometimes all right well this is simple can just connect here so you're gonna do that and uh, I'm just gonna throw speeds in here. 
speed him up. This is entirely unnecessary and will throw off the ratio a little bit if this continues this way, but I want to clear these tanks out. Uh, so, and it also takes quite a bit of power. You can see down there the uh, energy consumption is plus 150%. Uh, but this will just kind of speed him up a little bit to try to clear these out and get the refineries working more. I could add even another tank if I wanted to. Seems somewhat excessive, but we can do it. So there we go. You can see these guys kicking on. I'm going to take these speeds out for now. There we go. And that should get things running again, thankfully. All right, so these should all be good. And uh, that's that. So the robot, let's get rid of this. The robot thing is set up, which is really nice. Now, I would like a fusion reactor. It's 200 of each, which I'm betting we can actually get done fairly quickly. I mean, these yellow science packs are totally backed up, which reminds me yet again, I need a radar. <laughs> I'm actually going to do it right now. I'm not going to get distracted. I don't know how many times I said I needed a radar by science and then not done it. So we're going to just do it right now. Oh, this is such a pretty sight. All these things backed up. Does that actually cover all of it? It does indeed. Of course, I was standing there, so maybe not. But uh, in terms, so now the, the fusion reactor, it's expensive. It's 250 blue circuits, which, I mean, there's not going to be many blue circuits. <laughs> uh, which is due to a circuit problem. So we're going to, if we want some, we're just going to kind of have to funnel some off, I guess. And actually, what I want to do is we can go upgrade... Yeah, so you can see how these circuits are only making it to like halfway through. Now it's not a full belt out. And part of that is actually the input. The input more needs to be red belt than anything else, which is quite a bit of work uh, getting that done. I'm not sure I want to do that on camera for you guys because it's really not that interesting after you've seen it a few times. So actually let's go dump these in our little starter junk chest. One thing we could work on is some laser turrets because once we get more power, we are going to want, probably lasers are going to be better in the long run. They're, they're more powerful than gun turrets until, gun turrets can actually get more powerful than lasers, but the lasers, you know, don't require ammo refills and they do laser damage instead of uh, physical damage. And like the bigger, the, the big biters and then later, after that, the behemoth biters, uh, those uh, those have a high, very high resistance to physical damage. And wow, that was really quick. All right, game. What you're going to do is you're going to grab this, and we're going to use a circuit network again, very handily. And we're going to wire him to here, to this chest. And we're just going to say, work until blue circuits, or sorry, work if blue circuits are less than 200 50. Once it hits 250, it'll stop. That way it's not going to just take it forever uh, because that is how much this guy costs. Perfect. So now, uh, how about exoskeletons? That would be nice. And they're only red, green, blue, which is perfect. Uh, so laser turrets are going to require steel circuits and batteries, which we pretty much just have all down here. In fact, we have it, like, right here. Can we just do lasers here. <laughs> I think we're, we're just going to do lasers right here. It's not like a super permanent thing, but I mean, it'll work. It'll like, it'll run. And, and I mean, we don't need the, like, I feel like sometimes people go super overboard and, and it's not bad. I mean, if you want to go overboard, go overboard by all means. But, uh, you know, sometimes people build like 15 of these things making lasers. And it's like, unless you're on a death world, that just, it's just a lot. I mean, sure. They take 20 seconds, but you know that's three a minute, and it's not like I'm gonna be, like I'm, it's, not, it's not like I'm gonna be using these, and they're gonna be destroyed every minute. And speaking of destroyed, our power is just gone. What? I didn't like even hook anything up. Only if you, wait, really? Did we actually? Is this belt actually not enough, or did was there a short coal shortage? I think there was a little bit of a coal shortage there for a minute. Um, but this is just going to be running, like, constantly. So they'll build up pretty good. And we just have steel right here. So let's have him do that. And then you export. And we'll just underground here. That worked out really nicely. And it's all powered. He's good. He's going to take batteries once he uh, once he fills up. 
The inserters will fill this for, I think, twice. Yeah, twice the amount it needs. So you can see there's 40 circuits because it needs 20 and there's going to be 40 steel. And then it would fill up to 24 batteries. Uh, so this isn't like, this inserter is going to be a bit of a cap, probably. Maybe not, actually. So let's go, let's go upgrade our power because that is, that's going to be a problem. Well, that wasn't the, we were actually out of coal, but we will need more power here shortly anyways. So let's grab some iron. And why were we out of coal? That is actually an important question. Like, this should be going. Ew, okay, so this thing's holding, even with the inactivity, since these inserters are still working, it's keeping it here until this is empty, which means that these are going to run out, probably. I think that's I think that's the issue we probably had. I'm going to have to find a workaround for that. Not too big of a deal. We'll go ahead and grab some of these gears. I really should probably put the gear machine back. We do need these. All right, so that's that's all good to go. Then, so this smelter is almost built out. So is this one. Uh, the robots seem to be keeping up decently. We're still out of this, but I think that's just... Yeah, everything fell behind, although these are not on again. It's because there's no oil. Because... <laughs> We've been running this entire time off of two pump jacks, which I think is actually pretty impressive. These guys have done an awesome job. Uh, two pump jacks getting us all the way to like fusion reactors and stuff. But we will need to secure more oil. So that may actually be what we do next episode. Because I haven't really shown... I mean, it's pretty straightforward setting up oil. Uh, but somebody did request, uh, which I think is a pretty good idea. Someone did say I should show like setting up an outpost uh, in its entirety just so people kind of have an idea of how that goes. All right, and we'll just pipe here. I'm using these again, just to keep it consistent. We certainly have better power poles, but I like to try to keep it somewhat consistent when I can. And grab these. I mean, it's only six more engines, but that's like almost six more megawatts. Six times nine is what, 54, four point, or five point, four megawatts then about extra which is still actually looking not great <laughs> as I say that it's actually not looking too good let's just do that here and there and then some burner inserters oh that's not a burner inserter so yeah that coal we'll need to figure out some way to have it work better I mean I could do like a leave on partially empty condition well actually these are pretty full i'm not sure why why did we like randomly run out of coal i'm actually a little bit confused on that one uh let's make well we'll do, let's just finish this out these six more so two full steam furnace or uh, steam engine columns definitely getting up there a bit it's funny actually how quickly things can scale up because like we're actually not using that much power in the grand scheme of things. We're using, I mean, almost 60 megawatts, which I mean, it's a lot for, you know, compared to 10 hours ago, but this is like an absolute drop in the water, drop in the bucket for like how much power we're going to be using once we actually go to mega base stage. I mean, it's going to be in the gigawatts easily. Attacked again. Aha, he ran into my turret. What is using, like, randomly we're just maxing out on power. I think it's all the miners turning on. I think we're really starting to draw from these outposts now. So we have all those miners turning on. These, these things aren't actually full, which is because some of these chests are being emptied sooner, even though I have a four-lane balancer here. Hmm. Okay. Well, this, I may need to actually upgrade this more after this episode, for next episode. Because with all those miners kicking on, I mean, this shows you, you know, we have almost 500 miners. It's really deceiving. 500 miners almost. Actually, probably do have 500 if all of them, I'm sure there's three out there somewhere that aren't actually on. And I'm just picking these up, just to keep it a little bit clean here. And let's see, how are we doing on time? Uh, we are at 29 minutes. This is a perfect spot to end. I pretty much we pretty much got done what I wanted to and things are going well uh, this is not going great uh, we should get we will need to get some more iron 
Click in like this iron post, outpost, or this iron patch up here. Come down to bring in, actually, this one would work good. If need be, we could just do a separate rail, just literally bring it straight down. Uh, and then we will need oil, and this probably should require a train. That's quite a ways to actually pipe it. So we could bring a little train for oil, and maybe we'll do that next episode. But I think that'll do it, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it helpful, and the logistics network stuff and robots and chess was understandable. But if you have any other questions or comments, do leave them down below, and I will do my best to respond. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all.